We're here this morning with uh, the Siegel Schwal Blues Band after a wonderful evening at the Four Seasons. Thank you, Corky, for joining us this morning. I really appreciate it. A uh, couple of quick questions for you. I know you guys have been had a long evening last night and a uh, beautiful breakfast this morning, but can you tell me what are some of the rewards of being a professional musician? And on the flip side, what would you feel are some of the negatives? Mm -hmm. Well, the rewards... Well, let's do negatives first. I think negatives would be good to do first. The negative of being a musician is you don't get um, insurance. There's no insurance. There's no fringe benefits. Mm -hmm. And there's no unemployment. And if you're lucky, you get paid. Uh, if you're a musician, of course, that has a day job, there's no negatives. So really, there's very few negatives. Because if you're not making enough money being a musician uh, and you have to get a job, that's not negative. That's just putting you in a good place because having a job and an income <laughs> is great. Then you get to play music and you don't have to worry about the money. So the only negative is, is if you uh, are a struggling musician. You're making a living at it, but not quite enough to live with any kind of comfort at all. Corky, you've undoubtedly had a remarkable musical career. What would you consider would be your greatest musical achievement? Hmm, musical achievement, musical achievement. Um, well, I could think of some things that I haven't achieved. <laughs> um, It's interesting because when we tend to think of achievement, we tend to think of sort of in, in, in terms of success, whether it be success in, lear success in learning a technique or success in the music business or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I really can't look at that. I mean, I, I could look at some highlights of my career, but it, my greatest achievement um, is anytime I come to, and I'm going to be a little general if you don't mind. It's fine. Anytime I come to a realization about something about music that supports everything I'm doing, and of course this happens, you know, now and again, mm -hmm. there's certain things like, you know, today I was telling you about that rhythm thing where, where um, I was playing with John Prine and uh, Jethro Burns, the mandolin player, and they both played different rhythm concepts that didn't work with each other, and I had to find a way of playing in between. And that was in the early 70s, and it changed the way I play music because I had such great excitement when I found out you don't have to play even eighth notes or triplets. You could actually play this whole infinite field between the triplet and the eighth. Or, or anyway, I mean, there's this grid, rhythm mm -hmm. grid that we have, and all the spaces in between the grid are beautiful places to be rhythmically. Right. And so discovering that was... I mean, if we, uh, it was more of a discovery than an achievement. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I tend to look at <clears throat> um, any kind of attainment more as a discovery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's something I tripped <laughs> yeah, over right. and go, wow, there it is. So that was one of the rhythm and dynamic variation, you know, because, you know, I do workshops on that, you know, loud and soft. Mm -hmm. I feel that that was a great discovery, you know, great discovery. And, and I'm still working with the rhythm concept and I'm still working with dynamic variation. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, I don't feel like there's something that's been achieved. It's mm -hmm. sort of a direction I'm going. And achievement is a goal that is, in my mind, can't, can't be reached. Beautiful. How would you explain chamber blues to someone who had never heard of it? Well, you know, first of all, explaining any kind of music or any kind of anything to anybody uh, that they haven't tasted or heard. It, it, it's impossible, actually. Um, let me explain to you what milk tastes like. Mm -hmm. You never had milk. Well, it's white. <laughs> uh, it has this chalky, you know, and it's sweet and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it, it's like it. good luck. Mm -hmm. The only way is the person has to drink it. 
And that's true with anything, so I'm just giving you a hard time. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but... Wouldn't have expected any less. <laughs> right. So, um, the, uh, the Chamber Blues, it's white. No, <laughs> it's uh, chalky. No, it, um, it's, first of all, instrumental. That's one level of, of explaining something. Mm -hmm. So, the instrumentation is it's a string quartet, which is two violins, viola, and cello. And a string quartet is an amazing experience. Uh, I, I, I started writing Chamber Blues in 1983. And right then was about the peak of synthesized music, where a lot of musicians, I mean, they still are, of course, instead of using a string section, they use synthesized strings, mm -hmm. drum machines, you know, synthesized trumpets, synthesized harmonicas, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And that really was very very popular in, in the 80s and it probably still is, is popular um, and I just being a kind of guy that always wanted to offer something different than the mainstream just you know it's just my tendency felt like here's this amazing experience all the wood sweet wooden sounds of all these instruments like the cello and the viola mm -hmm. you know I wasn't really especially fond of violin but but the, 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 the blend of those four instruments is, is outrageous, mm -hmm. an amazing experience. As a matter of fact, when uh, I have a headache, I just go listen to them rehearse. Mm -hmm. It makes the mm -hmm. headache go away. So, mm -hmm. you know, so the string quartet is a beautiful wooden sound. And then the tabla. So instead of trap drums, you know, with the bass drum and the mm -hmm. hi-hat and all that, the, the East Indian tabla offers a nice percussion sound, but it's a wooden sound. Boom, boom, and has a lot of different sounds on it, so you could get a little something like on traps, because traps offer you all these different sounds, mm -hmm. and tablets have different sounds. It also fits really well with the wooden instruments. So, you know, that's instrumentally. And then there's blues harmonica, and blues piano, and maybe a little vocal now and again. And the socio-political contrast there is, here's blues, here's classical instrumentation-wise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And of course, and just based on the instrumentation alone, people will look at it and go, well, this can't work, you know. Right. But then we take it to another level, there's a compositional level. And what it is is a juxtaposition, not, not a blend. Because if we talked about a blend of blues and classical, mm -hmm. that would be jazz. Mm -hmm. Because jazz is very European, very diatonic, and da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da, you know, just straight American mm -hmm. scale, European scale. And uh, and then blues is a different mode. It uses a different scale. And blues is very linear, melodic. All the harmonies that exist in blues are more coincidental to the melodic. So there's a bass line mm -hmm. and a guitar line and the vocal has a melody. And all those together, they're pretty free, but at any point along the way, there's this harmony, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In classical music, it's very harmonic music. It, 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 you know any moment in, in time in a classical piece of music what the harmony is, where it came from, and where it's going. And there's, and harmony is part of the intent of the music. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very diatonic, so it, there's a little contrast between the blues and the classical. There's very little difference in reality. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the scale is a little bit different, and the concept of thinking about harmony it's a little bit different, and, and, and that's about it. So compositionally, what, what Chamber Blues does is it offers a juxtaposition of classical and blues. So pretty much at any time during a performance, or many times during a performance, you could hear the classical and the blues at the same time, but they're not blended. They right. each are holding their own flavor. So that's compositional, and that's instrumental, and that's the two things that that uh, you know describe is able to describe chamber blues and uh, blues harmonica. You know you, you could sort of get those flavors. Now people will say that you can't do this. That blues and classical are extremely opposites. Mm -hmm. But in reality, muse any kind of music, the most extreme different kinds of music, actually work together very well because they're basically made of harmonies, 
melodies, you know, pitches, rhythms, mm -hmm. articulations, durations. The substance of music, which is the musical elements, that's what makes music work. Mm -hmm. Well, two of my real favorite Siegel Schwal tunes are Hush Hush and I think it was The Wine. Yeah. What would you say maybe two of your favorite Siegel Schwal tunes of all time would be? Right. Um, well, I, lo I like, um, I think I think it was The Wine. Mm -hmm. I, I really love that. Hush Hush is a Jimmy Reed. Right. He, he wrote right. that song. Um, I think that, uh, I just sort of like when, uh, I think I'm always thinking of your darling. Mm -hmm. I'm always mm -hmm. thinking of your darling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that. I think that's sort of nice. I, mm -hmm. But I don't have any, I mean, I, um, the, the CD, the, the compilation CD, mm -hmm. that's a lot of my favorite stuff right, right. right there. You, you had know, a little a influence in what went on there, I imagine? Oh, completely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the guy from Billboard who really put the thing together, um, I let him, you know, make some choices that I wouldn't have made. Mm -hmm. But basically, it, it was me, you know, choosing the material. If um, if a person were to judge Corky Siegel by one song, what song would you make them listen to? Well, first of all, I'd ask them not to judge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't ask them not to judge me. Um, okay, let's say, good idea. Let's say um, somebody was going to book Siegel Schwal and they wanted to hear one song. Um, which one would I play for them? Right. Um, probably, you know, I don't want you to be my girl with the long harmonica solo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Jim has a solo in it, boom. But you know it's hard because with with this Siegel Schwal band with Sam and Rollo and Jim, it's four bands. Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's like four. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you got to have four songs. You know? <laughs> so performance wise, you know, I I really love you know when Rollo does Long Distance Call, mm -hmm. and Sam does Mojo, and Jim does um, You Don't Love Me Like That, mm -hmm. and you know. I, I would say I don't want you to be my girl, you know, with the harmonica solo. The longer so you just write a new solo. song that would encompass all four then? <laughs> <laughs> well, Hush Hush does that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> what are your plans for 2004 and beyond? Right. Um, I, you know, at this age you can't make plans. I just have my dessert first. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, well, actually, a lot of recording, mm -hmm. a lot of recording projects. I would like to do, <clears throat> you know, I got a chamber blues thing that's ready to mm -hmm. be mixed. I mean, it, it's not completely recorded, but uh, four fifths of it is ready to mix. Mm -hmm. So we're ready to do that. <laughs> and then I have a, uh, I just discovered 20 songs that I wrote that have never been recorded that I totally forgot about. Some, wow. Really some cool stuff too. So I wanted to do that. Really unusual stuff. Matter of fact, the reason they weren't recorded is they're so unusual. Mm -hmm. They're really strange songs. So I really love them. And then I, I'm doing a, a, a children's record. Uh, uh, that's Chamber Blues. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a story, a couple nice stories in there and poems. Beautiful. Music poems, you know, they're, they're mm -hmm. spoken to music. And, and arrangements and everything so a lot of really interesting stuff that it's really not a children's record other than it seems a couple things in there seem like they're sort of would be written for children but they mm. weren't so that one and then um i would like to do a, you know a siegel schwal recording another one and then um i'm do i'm writing a book which was supposed to be finished at the end of the year but mo mostly is the text but mm -hmm. i'm um I'm starting to record some of the samples for the book. Mm -hmm. It's a book on dynamic variation called Jumping Off the Clef. Oh, beautiful. That's you know, an interesting that's name. Okay. Well, in wrapping it up, I have one final question for you. Of all the amateur musicians you ever played with while you were on the road, what was the most exciting time? Last night. <laughs> oh, no, no. That, no. Actually, no, I'm, I'm mistaken. 
Because those are amateur musicians. Oh, I see. Okay. Corky, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mr. Martin Mullins. Bye-bye.